Welcome back to the shop. So we got a red object here with a crosshairs on it. What we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in this. This is a fuel tank. It's brand new. Never had a drop of gasoline in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in this because we are going to mount a uh, level sending unit in it so that we know how much fuel is in this tank. So, without much more fanfare, there we go. We're going to drill our pilot hole. There we go. Got our pilot hole. I'll be back in a second. I'm going to vacuum and clean this up. I don't want to get as little chips in this tank as possible. Clear prop. All right, so there we go. So now we've got a carbide hole saw here. We're going to use this guy to make our hole. This is one of those times where I wish I had three arms, but uh, we'll be okay. And back at it. The trick with these things is you do not want to go as fast as you can possibly go. You want to drive them through nice and easy. And a hole is born. So now what we'll do is clean this up a bit and go from there. Okay, so what we got, so we have a regular fuel level sending unit right here. If it'll focus. There we go. And the fuel tank is eight inches tall on the inside. So what I did was I measured four inches to the center line of the marking system and made a mark. So that puts this in the center and then we figured out that five inch long for the float will have this not touch the top of the tank as sort of seen there it's very close but it shouldn't be touching so that's what's going to go in the tank we laid it out that way now this is going to be in two pieces um, it's not really the standard way of doing this, but it's going to work out for, for what I'm doing. This tank does not have a flange on it already. So what I did was I got the adapter flange. And I'm going to put that, we're going to mark that out on the tank, transfer these holes, drill these holes, and then we'll be able to get our finger under here and a wrench and tighten the nuts on the flathead bolts on there so we have a good gasketed seal on the top of the tank. So all we did here was we made some indexing marks for how we want the float to sit in the tank. Uh, it's just a quick reference. I transferred that sharpie mark to our base plate and now we can take the sending unit off. Uh, the sending unit sits between two uh, support brackets that hang the tank. So uh, placement of this isn't a thousand percent critical, but it's got to be relatively close. We got plenty of fudge factor here to play around with. So now that we have these marks, we're going to take this gasket out of here. And we are going to 
center this guy up like that. Maybe I'll see if I have a clamp that I could clamp that down on there with so I can get a good transfer on all these holes and not have to worry about it moving. So we got the old, good old school uh, cheapy Korea clamp on there. Run what you brung. That's uh, nothing wrong with that. We have a transfer punch here. Just going to transfer a little indent. Small brass mallet. Everything's probably going to jump when I do this, so sorry in advance. And ding fries are done. So we went around it with a with a punch and we re uh, we deepened these holes a little bit. Stainless is always very hard. So we're gonna use this drill here and uh, make some holes. Always got to be careful with that because, especially with these small drill bits, uh, they're really hard to tell when they're going to poke through. So, we'll just keep going here. Okay, so you can see we got one hole in already. We're just going to keep going around. We have this uh, drill here that chuck goes to zero, so we have a pretty small drill bit in it. We're just going to keep drilling around here in these holes since we got a center punch mark. Now we got some bigger holes to make. Okay, so there we go. They all fit in. But we're going to actually be putting longer screws and, and nuts on the underside of that so we can attach that better but that's just a test fit for now so we get the parts and we're back so now what we can do we have our nice flathead screws a little bit longer than the stock we can stick them in each one of these holes here and we also got stainless sealing washers for the underside of these bolts hopefully I don't drop everything inside but my plan here is to stick these on so we have a nice seal say they're for number 10 fasteners and I guess I should test that theory that's a tight fit yeah though I'll go on just gotta play around with it so no no need to watch for that but we're gonna put one of these on and then we got these high vibration lock nuts that we're also going to put on there and that's because this is going to be in a very high vibration area so we got the high vibration no plastic to have any issues with uh, the gasoline that's going to be in this tank either so the underside of this will be sealed with this uh, rubber that is rated for gasoline I think this is neoprene or something like that it's rated for fuel and we'll have the underside of these holes sealed and then we'll have the top sealed with the cork uh, right from the manufacturer so I'll get all these started and we'll be back so there it is all together lock washers and or I should say sealing washers and the lock nuts on the inside 
can see we have a little bit of a lip here all the way around. You can see the top of the tank, that's okay. We've got a good amount of cork gasket on the outside, should be sealed up real well. All that's left to do is install our float and this we have adjusted already for this tank. So all we got to do is install this. So there's that. We're just going to put these guys on here. And put one in it for now because I'm actually putting uh, anti-seize on these. Uh, I did not mention that on the other, but that's I'm doing that. It's a good idea anytime you're working with stainless. Uh, it has a tendency to want to uh, what they say exothermically weld itself together and basically it means you'll never get it apart again. So it's a good idea to put some on. Uh, maybe I should put some lock washers on this but the kit that I got did not come with lock washers so I don't think auto meter is very concerned about it so I'm gonna keep track of it and if they start working loose I will get a slightly longer fastener and go with go with that but for now these are the factory length screws so I'm gonna go with that and like I say if they work loose we will take care of it my main concern was I didn't want the ones in the tank to work loose and fall into the tank that would end up being a mess so there we go we'll go around with this tighten this up and we'll be done Okay, so there it is all installed. We got some nice uh, crush factor going on the cork all the way around on this. So this is a adapter for the old style tanks. And all I did was mount it, bolt it to the top of this tank with uh, ceiling washers. This is a washer for number 10 screw with uh, neoprene rubber so I sealed that underneath and they squish nice uh, they have a little bit of a of a Belleville type thing going there you can see they're conical so as you tighten them they they squash flat and this rubber comes out and then we have a lock nut that is a high vibration lock nut it's all metal there's no nylon in there to go bad at some point and then obviously we used a, a regular flathead 1032 fastener on there. And then these top screws are just uh, you know your regular run-of-the-mill socket caps. So there we go. It's all installed. It's done and ready to be installed into the car. So another another finished project there. Moving along. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.